Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. So in today's video we're actually gonna do a corset inspired dress which we're gonna drape. So draping a corset inspired dress is actually something that you guys voted for over in my community tab if you haven't already checked that out. <laughs> Um, I'm doing lots of polls over there and if I'm indecisive of what I should do next I'm just gonna ask you guys so you can participate in my videos that way of course also put some suggestions down in the comments below and I'd be very happy to follow through with those. Um, I just wanted to point out a small thing or I wanted to put out a disclaimer let's say. I'm using the word corset very very loosely here. Of course it's not a traditional corset but that also comes down to me not being a native English speaker. I don't know the difference between whatever I am doing and therefore the terminologies for it because in German corset is corset and everything's a corset that looks like this. So feel free to leave me down below a comment with the actual word but I just wanted to put out here that I am calling it corset for the whole video and I hope I'm not gonna get bashed for that because I just don't know what it's called in reality and I'm kind of talking out of experience because in one of my first videos, the one that actually went viral and built up my channel, <laughs> the one with the Princess Fairy inspired dress, I am also using the word corset and people pointed out that that's not a corset but a bodice. So I'm not quite sure what to use right here but I just wanted to point out that I am using the word corset very loosely. So. Please bear with me and excuse my lack of English knowledge, I guess. So with that out of the way, let's just jump right into the video. Before the draping can start, I use this small 3mm wide draping tape that you can find online. As you can see, I already have the lines on the left side of my dress form, which are the ones I mainly use. But for this video, I will show you how I am doing it by using the bare right side with the red tape. I prefer using the black one as it is easier to see through fabric. That's going to be very important in just a second. Make sure to have pins and scissors with you as well. The first line I start with is the line over the apex. I search for a spot on the shoulder that makes a nice curve over the apex down to the hem. I continue with the side seam and the back. The back starts in the shoulder point from the front. I would say the three main lines are center front and center back and of course your side seam. I like to divide the panel into sub panels which create one or two front side pieces as well as one or two side back pieces. That comes down to personal preference and the overall design of your garment of course. One thing I won't show in this video are the horizontal lines, so the bust, waist and hip line as I have already marked them on my dress form. Of course those lines are necessary in general for draping as they are part of the main guidelines. Once that is done I decide on the neckline I want. For this corset I'm gonna be doing a sweetheart neckline. After that, even though my dress form already has the cups marked, I highlight them with the tape to be able to see them better while draping. The next two lines are just for design purposes as you could very well drape a corset without them. To create the hemline I decided to add a hip piece which is gonna sit underneath the skirt in the end to make the dress more comfortable. Don't stop the corset at the waistline as it is the smallest point and therefore the most tight point and it would just cut into your skin. Rather carry on the pattern down towards the hip to release a bit and to have more comfort while wearing your finished piece. Once all the lines are done I take my measuring tape and roughly measure the height of the fabric panels I will need. My working area on my dress form is about 50 centimeters tall. I take some cotton fabric and cut a panel that is approximately the length of my corset to start 
start working. I start in the center front. The grain should follow the vertical center front line. I then ease it into place with my hands and take a marker to draw on the lines of the first piece. Now you see why I put the lines in place before. It makes it so much easier to drape. As the corset will have a lot of pieces in the end, I make sure to name every seam after a system I can put back together in the end. I also draw on all the notches I will need later on. With draping, it is so important to have a dress form that is as close to your measurements or the measurements needed as possible. You're draping exactly what your dress form has to offer, basically. I highly recommend you pad your dress form beforehand to resemble your measurements or the measurements needed, or make a dress form yourself with those measurements. I made my dress form myself. If you're interested in that video, I will link it in the eye right now. The cups get separated into three parts. The top part, which I am doing here, is one rounded long piece with the grain following the vertical middle line over the apex. I always make sure the fabric lays smooth and without wrinkles on the dress form. I also name the piece again and draw in all the notches I need. As I am draping my pattern pieces, I immediately cut out all the panels I created so I can measure the different lengths and correct them if needed later on. In my experience, this draping method is fairly accurate though and I almost never had to change a pattern piece because it wouldn't fit to the next panel. But just so that you know, you will need to measure all the lengths afterwards and see if everything fits together because a corset has to be really accurate and everything has to fit correctly by the millimeter. The lower two sections are these triangular shapes. The grain again follows the apex line. The third cup part, so in this case the left one that you can see in a second, is at a slight angle as it drapes better over the curved surface. The last thing is the hip portion, which is a long moon-shaped piece. You can also add a side seam here if you'd like. I had to include one as my side seam is at a slight curve. The grain follows the side seam here and I again smooth the fabric down with my hands, pin the corners and mark the pattern piece as well as all the important info. The remaining panels are just a repetition of the first center front one, which is why I'm not going to show you how I did it for the sake of the length of this video. The grain always follows the vertical lines to reduce
I'm gonna cut the pattern pieces out of my fashion fabric as well as a strong cotton canvas as my interlining. As this size is very individual and comes down to factors like size, length, panels, etc., I can only give you my approximate fabric consumption, which is 60 by 50 centimeters on the fold for one layer. As I have my outer fabric, my interlining, and in the end my lining, I will have three layers in the end. Of course, you will also need boning as well as bias binding tape and some ruffles to decorate the dress a bit in the end. Some bra wires are also handy which you can repurpose out of an old bra or buy them separately in your cup size. I continue with basting all the pattern pieces together like so. And now all the sewing begins. As I am making a lined piece, I have so many designs options as I don't have to worry about boning yet. I will add bias cotton piping in all of the vertical lines in this contrasting white color. After every seam, I iron the seam allowance open. Going back to all the haberdashery, I wanted to tell you where I am buying that from actually and I am using AliExpress which is cheap and directly from the manufacturer. It takes a while until it arrives at least for my country but if you have a good overview over your stock that should be no problem. I will link all the supplies I'm using in the description box down below. Stuff like the piping or the bias tape I buy in bulk, especially in the white colors that you're using so much. So a couple of hundreds of meters per item and they come in a neat roll which also helps a lot while sewing as nothing gets knotted up as everything has its own place. Okay, on to the cups. Before sewing them in place, I finish the cups themselves. I take the triangular pieces and sew the side seams together, so the dividing seam in the middle over the apex. Then I take the top part and sew it in place with a piping in between, a horizontal line basically. Make sure to not stretch anything while trying to ease the pieces into place. These need to fit perfectly to avoid wrinkles. If you measured your seam at lengths, they should add up and and fit perfectly. Once that is done, I continue with the back pieces. Same procedure as in the front, adding piping in the seams, ironing them open.
I add closures into the center back pieces in the form of hooks and eyes tape, which I sew into place. If you want to, you can add some boning to it, which I don't do though. I then sew the back pieces together and iron the seams open. Once that is done, the front and back pieces get sewn together. The last step is the hip. I stitch the side seams together and iron it open as well. I then stitch both pieces into place and top stitch the seam allowance toward the hip pieces. All of this will be covered up, it doesn't matter at all if the stitch is visible. Okay, the outer layer is done. Let's continue with the lining. You see me doing this before, let's just use some editing magic and cut out the pieces and sew them together. Voila, the lining is done, almost of course, as we add boning next. I'm using wide or transparent Rigeline boning, which is directly stitchable and it doesn't need boning channels. I stitch the boning on the seams while alterating the direction it's bent to get a straight result in the end. To create a channel for the underwire, I stitch cotton bias tape into place. I make sure the wire doesn't come out into the seam allowance on the top as it still needs to be stitched onto the piece we did a minute ago. I put left sides together and pin the neckline and the hem of the outer layer and the lining together. I also search for the hip curve to add another stitch over top of both layers to fuse them together. As I will be adding decorations to the outer layer later, I will stitch both layers together in the end to make the corset more rigid and to reduce wrinkles. I will also stitch down the piping lines like next to it to make the stitch kind of invisible to fuse the two layers together because I had a few wrinkle problems so I would suggest you do the same if you happen to try to remake the corset yourself. Just try to make the pieces one layer as much as possible because it just reduces wrinkles. I don't know why I had a, a few problems with this corset right here. I did the dress already, I made the pattern already and it fit perfectly. No wrinkles, no nothing, everything just fit like a glove. But for this piece, maybe it was the fabric, maybe the fabric kind of shrunk when I ironed it, I don't know. But I have no idea why it made such big problems, you're gonna see it in the end. It has wrinkles all over. 
and I'm kind of embarrassed by it because it shouldn't look like this. I'm gonna show you in the end a few pictures of or a, few, a video of the other corset that I made after the same pattern that came out perfectly basically wrinkle free. I have no idea but yeah I just wanted to put it out there because I probably will get some comments about why it's so wrinkly <laughs> and that the method doesn't work and so on and so on. It does. I just don't know what happened to this specific dress right here, probably because I was filming it and it didn't work out. I don't know. I just wanted to point it out that I already made this dress and everything went perfectly fine. <laughs> Anyways, continuing on, once the hip is stitched together, I top stitched the neckline and the hem as well, as I had a bit of problems with the lack of structure and therefore wrinkles in the center front, I decided to add some boning in the center front again. I stitched a boning channel into the middle front and added some from the lining side as well. If you add boning channels like I am doing right now, make sure that the boning piece itself has a rounded edge so that it doesn't make any problems while putting it into the the channel. I will also add a few more boning strips from the lining side. Obviously you wouldn't do that, you would have done it before, so if you can just put them into the lining itself as well and not like this, like from um, yeah, the inside now. Or cover them up if you do it like this. I just stitched them on and I added in total two more in the center front or like next to the center front and then two more on the side seams which I end up covering up with this adorable trim so it worked out in the end for me and also it reduced the wrinkles by quite a bit which I was very I then pinned the center back seam into place and sewed over top of that, making sure to catch the folded line while doing so. To finish the neckline, I used my bias binding again and sewed it on the complete piece. I also sewed my label into place and I repeat the same for the hemline. 
Now that the corset is done, let's make the skirt. For the skirt, I want to make a half circle skirt. I also want to gather the waistline. So I measure the seams of the dividing line between the hip part and the corset. I then took one and a half times as much for my waist circumference to know what the inner circumference for my circle skirt would be. From that, I am able to calculate the length of each piece. I will link a website in the description box that does that for you. Once you figure out your pattern, it's important to get the grain right. I want my center front to be cut on the bias since it's falling nicer. I then can decide the grain for the remaining pattern pieces. For this skirt, I divided my pattern into 12 pieces, so three pieces for a quarter of the skirt. I will have to cut out everything four times with the center front laying on fold, therefore only three times. I also wanted to point out that I wanted this kind of wavy hemline as it makes the skirt look more interesting. So what you're seeing on screen right now is basically just a quarter of the whole half circle skirt. So I'm highlighting right here in red what the three pieces that you can see are actually only um, out of the whole half circle skirt. So as you can see, it's just that much. So I would need 12 pieces in total, four times every piece apart from the front piece that it lays on fold. That's just three times. Once I have that, I sew the seams together and hem the skirt. I also used my gathering foot to gather as tight as possible to be able to pin the skirt easier. After sewing the zipper into the middle back, I pin on the skirt and sew it on, bind the open edge with again some bias binding and the dress is done. So thank you guys so much for watching. I will add some video of me wearing the dress so you can see what it looks like in action outside in the cold. <laughs> if you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and leave a comment with video ideas you'd like me to do next. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel and ring the bell to get notified once I post again. Make sure to check out my community tab and my Instagram as I am sharing a lot of polls and behind the scenes footage, which might be interesting for you as well. And now a roll the cold outside uh, in motion clips. <laughs>